I think it's about time I build my engine. What do you think, Mr. Piston? Do you think I should build my engine? Yeah, I think I should build my engine. That is right, today is the day that I assemble my fully forged bottom end to my 1.6 liter Miata. I'm talking crankshafts, rods, pistons, bearings, all that. So without further ado, let's get started. Wait, I should probably make a disclaimer. Before this video starts, I just want to say this is not a full tutorial on how to build your engine. It's just kind of following along what I did. If you're building an engine yourself and you need a tutorial, go watch Nap Motorsports. He does a great job at explaining everything and giving you tips and tricks. He goes over literally everything about tearing down and building a Miata engine. A couple things I didn't include is stuff like measuring your tolerances, gapping your rings, positioning your rings, along with some other tips I left out. Uh, take this video as more of entertainment and a rough idea on how to do it rather than like strictly educational. All right, I'm gonna be assembling the rods and pistons. I did this one first just to kind of learn how to do it, but I'm gonna show the other three on camera. It's pretty easy. It takes some technique, but it's not that hard. All right, here's your rod. Here are my pistons. You can see it's a, from Mazda Miata 1.6, a 78.5, and these are light. Here's the rod and here's the piston. Now along with your pistons, you'll have a wrist pin and you'll also have circlips. So let me get two circlips out of here. These are honestly the hardest part of the whole piston assembly. These circlips go into these holes to hold the wrist pin in there. There's a little notch right there that you can put either a flathead screwdriver or like a little pick. These just press in there but you can see that is way bigger than the hole. So you gotta really compress these to put them in there. So what I do is I put half of it in like so. Half of it's in the groove and then right there is the notch. And I take either a flathead or a really small flathead screwdriver or in this case, a little pick. And I put that right there and I use that to help press it down and guide it into where it needs to be. All right. All right, most of it's in there, and then I can just pop the rest of this in. You'll hear it click, and that's in place, and that will stop your wrist pin when it goes through. It'll stop it on, on this inside. Now, once you're at this point, do not install the other stir clip. I'm going to take my wrist pin and unwrap it. I've got some assembly lube. I'm just going to lube this baby up. I'm just gonna put a dot right into this rod here. And spread that around with my finger. The front of the piston is shown by a little notch right there. And these rods, aftermarket rods, they really don't matter which direction they go. But I'm gonna put the front of the piston matched up with the logo on the, the rod. See, there's the, you can see the max peating rods right there and nothing on this side. So what you do is line these two up you'll see it makes a hole right there you slide your wrist pin in to the hole on the back side all right line it up here and put the wrist pin all the way through until it gets caught on the circlip that you just installed and then on the other side to hold it all in there you're gonna install another wrist pin which i got right here same exact way part of it in i'm gonna take my pick put it in that hole and as i'm using this pick to kind of hold pressure on there I'm pushing it down with my thumb and the pick is sort of guiding it into the hole. All right, and that's mostly in there. So I just got to push in, hear that click and that is in place. That's a completed piston ready to go in. Just need the piston rings. So I'll set this to the side. So that's two out of four done. Now that you know how to do it, I'm just going to do the other two really quickly. All right, so with the piston rings, you put the big waffle one in the big old port right there. Make sure those are, the ends are butted up against each other. Actually I have it upside down, whoops. This is the right side up, so it makes a W and not a M, I guess it would be. So you see those are butted up against each other right here. Then your oil rings are the smaller ones. These go on the bottom, or one of them goes on the bottom. Try not to break these rings because you do not get extra. All right, yep, that's in there. Sorry, I didn't get a good angle of it. See right below the waffle is another one. Put that where it needs to be. And then for the top and the second ring, um, you should probably use ring pliers for those, but the ring pliers that came with my kit uh, were way too big and they didn't actually fit onto it. 
your silvery ring is your top ring, and the other one is your second ring. There's a little N on them. You can't really see it, but on, on one side there's an N, and that goes on top. They really only go in the one slot. You can't really put it in the wrong slot. This goes towards the front of the piston. There's that little divot there marking the front. And then the top ring is the very opposite of it going towards the back. All right, that is a completed piston. I'm gonna do this with every other piston and I'll see you when I'm done. We've got my block ready, my pistons and rods, and my crankshafts ready to go. Something pretty interesting about this is my rod cap was actually stuck on this. One of the bolts would not come off. The bolt and the nut was spinning. So I had to weld the bottom of the bolt in place to take the nut off. Luckily, even with a spun bearing, it didn't mess up any of these, this polished area. I've got my block flipped over and I'm gonna be putting in the main bearings. So these are it. You can see they have a little oil hole to match up with, you can't really see it, but there's oil holes on the backside of all these. These have a little tang right there. If you can see how that's bulged up. That lines up to these right here. There's little tangs on each one of them. And what you do is simply put that aligned to the top there, pinch it in and then place it down. I think that will sit right in place. All right, first up, I'm gonna hammer in that plug that took me absolutely forever to take off. It's just a press fitting in there. Just hammer it in. Now I'm gonna put in my oil squirters. This calls for, uh, I believe, nine to 13 foot pounds. I'm gonna do uh, 11, so like in the middle. Take some of my assembly lube and just lube everything up. Time to drop the crankshaft in. It has already been pre-cleaned. Spray all the journal down. There we go, it's free spinning. Now I put the thrust washers in. does not move side to side, here we go. Now for the main caps. You can kind of see a number one right there, it's just one line, and then this points towards the front of the engine, so this way. Here's a tiny bit easier to see, a, a number two right there. This also points towards the front. This one is definitely the easiest to see out of the harder ones. There's a three. Now this one you can't miss. You can see that four right there. That goes on the one with the thrust washers. And I think this is the last one. I might've got two and five mixed up. I hope not. Um, guess we'll find out. Oh yeah, that's, this is definitely two. Okay, I got them, I got them right. We're good. You can take the back of a mallet, or in this case, I got a stick. Just bang them down into place. I have already um, used plastic gauge to see the tolerance and everything of this. It's good, uh, it's within spec. Crank spins, 
and then let me torque these down. A little trick I found to get these caps off the rods, they're really in there, like you can't even see a gap right there, is to back these out almost all the way, put a socket on this, put it against your table, and then lightly hammer the socket. That should introduce a little gap. Yep, you can see the gap starting to form right there. Do it on both sides until it comes apart. That should be good. And then you take your bolts out and they're separated. Boom. Now for the last set of bearings you'll put on is the rod bearings. It has a little tang in this corner right there you can see. Line that up with the tang here. And then press down. And that's in there. Good. And then repeat for side with the rod itself. Tang in the tang hole. And boom. Right in there. Now I'm just going to do that for all of them. I put some masking tape on the bolts right there just so it doesn't score my cylinder walls. I'm just going to take some motor oil and lube up the cylinders. I'm just going to put some oil in between the rings. And you're gonna lube this sucker. This is cylinder number one, piston number one. Um, make sure that dot is in the front there. The front of the engine is this way. Plop it most of the way down. Make sure your rings are lined up accordingly. Actually, first let me, let me open up my ring. Closer. Put the piston in this. Close it just enough so that there's a little skirt poking out there. Take my ball in here. Make sure it's all on there. some ARP lube in, on these because these are ARP studs or bolts what it calls for and then 45 foot pounds all right then I'll turn the engine over and get cylinders two and three Those are all torqued down and we're ready to go. Alright, that'll be the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed me building my fully forged bottom end of my engine. It'll probably be a little bit until I build the rest of the engine. Um, I gotta save up for some parts, mainly the oil pump, which is like 500 bucks for a billet one. But anyway, um, there'll be some other projects and videos to hold you over in the meantime on the Reverend channel. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.